Let's talk about data types and variables. All right, we found some back and tell you once more. And in this video, we're going to be talking about data types and variables. So we think back variables. We've already heard that particular vocabulary, right? We've heard about that, but there's a couple of more things that are going to be now added over here. First things first is there are comments that you can write inside of the code. Now we've seen these basically at the top over here. We've also seen them over here. So there's a couple of instances where I have already done some comments. The code that you see here is also available down below in the GitHub repository and the gist. So you can double check that right there. You can copy it over if you want to, or just we'll take a look at it there. Take a look at it in the video. Either works totally fine. Whatever basically works for you. And we're going to have a couple of vocabulary over here again, but not to worry. You're going to basically, you're going to find out like all of those are pretty straightforward, all things considered. So first things first, if we do a double slash over here, that is going to be a comment. That means that we can write whatever we want in here and it is going to be completely ignored by basically the program, right? So usually if we were to just write whatever we want, all of a sudden it's like, this just doesn't exist. Whatever the case may be, we're honoring the syntax of Java. If we just write random crap in here, that is why uh, that would turn red. However, if it's a comment over here or a multi-line comment, as you can see, so slash star and then a star slash, right? And everything in between here is a multi-line comment. Those can be quite useful for explaining stuff. Sometimes some people say that you should basically never have a comment and the code should explain itself. I believe for absolute beginners, you can completely disregard this. If it is useful to you to write a comment, that's totally fine. At the end of the intermediate stage, that's when you can stop writing comments. What sometimes can also be extremely useful is the following. If you are writing code, right? So this is, you don't even need to know anything yet, but obviously when we write code, we are going to solve the particular problem, right? And very often, and we are going to see this, especially in the um, in the exercises, the exercises are going to be super useful. And I'm going to show exactly the same idea there. Comments can be really useful when you go and you make your program, meaning you have a particular problem. Hey, I need to calculate this particular thing. I want to uh, convert this thing into this thing. Then what you can do is you can write comments in your code before you write your code. So you can say step one, read in file. And then you can do step two has to be, I have to clean up input and so on and so forth, right? So you can write down, okay, what it's each step that I need to take. This is really good and it's a very, very good idea. This is one of the really useful ways to use comments in your code in order to say, okay, these are the steps that I need to go to because every single thing that you have when you are programming is you have a big problem and you want to break it down and break it down and break it down into smaller and smaller and smaller problems until basically you have each individual line is one like singular tiny problem that you solve. Highest level overview once again, but that's sort of the idea. And that's where comments can be really useful. We think back once again about variables, right? So variables were a data type and then a name of a variable that would be our declaration. You can also immediately initialize a variable by telling it its data type, then the name of the variable and immediately using the assignment operator equal over here to assign a value to that specific variable. Now, we have different data types and we're going to talk about the basic data types that exist over here. And those are, as you can see, all orange. So everything that is orange inside of IntelliJ in this case is a keyword. So keywords are always important words. We can even see we're just going to peek out just like a slight peek uh, at the top over here. We can see, oh, there's another stuff that's orange over here. Public static void. Interesting. Also orange. Yes. So orange is always keywords that are reserved by the language. So that means that Java has int in this case as a keyword. So int just means integer, right? It's short for integer in this case. And this data type stores whole numbers, right? This includes negative ones as well. So a, an integer can store a value between, you know, minus 2.1 billion to plus 2.1 billion. That's the idea. And we've seen this previously, right? We can uh, here declare it, we can then assign it, and then we can initialize a different variable right here in theory. And we go from integers to the next one, which is floating floating point numbers, not not floating point numbers. That's something completely different. But yeah, floating point numbers, there's two basic types that we're looking at. That is the float and the double. In high level overview, most likely, let's say in Minecraft modding, you're probably going to see a lot of floats. I'm unsure what is going to be used in Hightail modding. I'm not sure about that. But in Minecraft, mostly floats are used. The general idea is that doubles are a little bit more precise, as in they have more numbers after the dot. And th so there's a precision that's higher there uh, and flowing point numbers are not as precise. 
also a very important note for floating point numbers, they can tend to have rounding errors, okay? So that that's why, for example, this is an, a very apt example, if you ever were to make a uh, an account, um, like a, let's say you make a bank, right? Maybe this is also kind of an exercise that we're going to do in the later video. Basically, if we have the account value, let's say over here, right? And make this a float, you can say, well, we're just going to make it a float. That's totally fine. And now we have, let's say, you know, 20 US dollars and 20 cents in there. And for a float, we always need to end this with an F. You can see this is also ended with an F. That's the very specific thing for a floating point number. Otherwise, it's going to see this as a double. We should be able to see this. You know, we provide over here a double, right? Because it's going to interpret this as a double. So we can put in an F over here. If you want to be really precise for a double, you can also put a D at the end. And then it's going to really make sure that, okay, this is a double. But you don't have to. It's going to auto basically uh, recognize this as a double in this case. But yeah, here we now have an account value, let's say in our bank of $20.20. And, $20. and you might say, that's totally fine. No, 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 no. You would never want to do this because floating point numbers are error prone for precision. This means that it can happen that this turns into um, one nine 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 nine. Now you might say, is that really that bad? It's like, well, let's say this happens to 1 million accounts and some of them uh, maybe count upwards and some of them count downwards and this happens you know however often you do a transaction complete disaster that could never work right so that is a very important thing floating point numbers can sometimes you know mess up a little bit but most of the time in a very tiny way so for storing things like the position in a 3d space that that's not the biggest deal if it's off by like you know, one one thousandth or one one millionth of, of, of one floating point number. That's fair enough. But when it comes to something like currency, yeah, that's never, never, never do this, right? Th this is what we would always use integers because those are straight to the point, always going to be, you know, 150. So you would basically put the dollar value in one integer and the cents value in another. That's the idea. And the way that the floating point numbers or doubles in this case are written inside of the computer, let's say, is scientific notation. You probably have seen this previously, right? Maybe in, in a high school or university somewhere. Basically, the, the idea is that you store a number, then you store 10 and then to whatever um, power you want, right? In this case, this scientific notation is going to create pi over here, right? So 3.14159265, right? So here, written out as a uh, as a as a whole number actually so this is actually going to be 300 million and then times 10 to the minus 8 and that's then going to put the decimal point right here that's the idea and that's how it's represented within the code let's say or or within the metal even all right next up another really cool one and that is booleans booleans can only have two different values and that is true or false. You can see if you like the video, hey, that's awesome. If you're subscribed and that's false, that's not nice, but maybe we can turn this into a true as well. Who knows? But that's the idea of Booleans. Booleans are super versatile. They will help you figure out if certain things are true or false. So basically, how much health do I have? And then I can say, hey, do I have this much health or more? I can ask things like, um, am I dead, right? So this would could be a thing that is expressed true or false, right? So this is, of course, in, let's say, in a game, right? Um, is alive could be a something that could be asked that then be answered with a Boolean. So in, in that sense, that is what Booleans are for. Could be real, Those are going to be really useful and we're going to go deep into sort of how they work because in theory, those are well, this is, you know, zero and one. We can also represent it like that. That is Booleans. Like I said, we're going to go much deeper into this in a future video as well. And finally, we got chars and strings. This is the first one where we have a bit of a more complex type as well. But first of all, the char, that stands for character. And you can see those are written with a singular quotation mark, right? So that's very, very important because everything that you see here, right? Everything that I've written here is not only always has to be extremely precise. So there's a couple of things that don't have to be precise. Uh, white spaces. They don't have to be precise. You can see I can put in as many spaces as I want. That's totally fine. The program does not care about that at all. Although it will probably make things less readable if you just put in white space everywhere. But in theory, you could, let's say, for example, the equals could be here. That's totally okay. What, of course, wouldn't work is this because then it wouldn't know where does the char uh, start and where does it end. So that it doesn't work everywhere, but it works in, in a lot of places, right? So spaces can be put everywhere. But a lot of other things... If I were to, let's say, I want to um, add this grade variable and I wanted to reference it somehow, if I write grade, you can see it turns into red Y. 
because this is written in uppercase and this is written in lowercase. Even things like that are extremely important. You really have to look at this very precisely. So if you get an error like this, it should tell you, wait a second, I've messed up somewhere and it's likely going to be some sort of, you know, how did I write it? Right. So that's very, very important to always note, note of this because I've seen people uh, be a little bit unprecise with these things. And in some capacities or in some places, that's not an issue. But in places like this, that's really an issue. So as you can see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more over here. You can see that the grade right here, the character grade, is a singular quotation mark. Then basically whatever character we want, right? We can put in a hashtag, we can put in a plus, uh, even a even a, a non-English character over here, an ö, an a, whatever I want, a uh, scharf as s, you know, whatever I put want to put in here, I can put in there. Even a space in theory, because that's also obviously a character, right? Uh, even an, uh, a number can be represented as a character. But in this case, let's just, you know, put in an A, let's say, and that's fine. But there can only ever be one, because as soon as we put in another one, you're going to see, A, that does not work. There can only be one character, well, in a character. Should make sense, right? It's, it's one singular character. Now, if we put multiple characters next to each other, then we get a string. Now, what you'll find here is that the string over here is not marked as a keyword. That's correct. In this case, in, in Java, it's not a keyword, but you can think of this as a bit of a more complex sort of data type, right? It's it's not a basic data type, but in my opinion, it should still be talked about in this instance when we talk about data types, because a string represents multiple characters next to each other. It can also represent a sentence. That's totally fine. Carlton Joe likes this video. That would work totally okay. As long as it is written within the quotation marks over here, very important, those are the quotation marks that you get. You should get this from Control 2, I believe. I think that this is the same on the on a QWERTY keyboard. Let me double check. Well, I was wrong. It is this one right here. So basically, this is the singular quotation mark. This is the double quotation mark. Listen, I have a QWERTY keyboard. My quotation mark is in the two over here. So there you go. Whatever the case may be, though, this is the double quotation mark that you need for to basically signify this is a string. And as long as you're within them, you can even see that if I were to, you know, highlight this, you can see the other one is highlighted as well. So everything in between here is going to be interpreted as part of this string. And those are the different data types that we have available. Now in the future, oh, we're going to be able to make custom data types and all sorts of crazy things and make really complex things with just the ones that I've presented over here. With an integer and a float and a boolean and a character or a string. Just those alone can make something spectacularly complex because those are usually all of the things that you need in order to make really cool things and, and just go crazy with it, basically. Yeah, in this video, we talked about data types, integers, floats, doubles, booleans, characters, as well as strings. That's the vocabulary you should think about and basically note down. We will go into basically all of them in a little bit more detail, specifically integers. Then we're going to go into booleans at some point as well and strings also. So uh, we're going to have a little bit more in-depth usage of all of them. But with that said, that's going to be it for this video right here. Hope you found this useful and you learned something new. I'll see you all in the next video. So, yeah.